The Museum of Human Emotions is a journey, uh, a journey where we experience, we evoke and share emotions and humanity across uh, spaces, the physical and digital spaces, and across cultures. Uh, for me, it's been accessing um, and sharing a previously inaccessible private collection. It was like opening a window early in the morning on a group of people coming from very different backgrounds and cultures, trying connections, uh, waving threads, giving voice and form to all what was unfamiliar, ungraspable. Um, it was a sort of investment in experiences. Uh, it's fun, it's emotional, it's dynamic, it's multicultural, it's very diverse. It is the first time that uh, we did it uh, on the digital space, so um, yeah, there are many things that are new to us. It's a very special place where artists can reconsider human emotion, especially because like we are like surrounded by many emotions online and also like offline. And um, so I'm very looking forward to see how artists observe and reconsider and also represent human emotion. How to deal with, with the virtual space in relation to such a physical and human topics as emotion are and how to create a space in this digital world that could feel intimate or could feel like common ground. That um, through this uh, virtual residency that make us um, more conscious about the time and also we have to be really focused in these three hours to be listening to others. What I appreciate is how hard we all have to work to kind of fill in the bits that we're missing from being together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's exhausting, but it yes. also it activates us to try to, in a way, um, make up for or find new ways to fill in the, mm -hmm. the bits that we're missing. And I like this collective act of trying to mm -hmm. fill in the parts we're missing together, doing it together. Mm -hmm feels like it's not a, a real space, but in the end it's a, it was about discovering a new way, a new form of being present and being supportive to a project or an artist's journey. This was the, the, my first time to think about the human emotion, the deeply. Uh, always when I make the something, the, I of course they think about the human emotion but in this time it's more like consciously i think for me maybe emotion is just like a, a river and i try to um wander around with the river see how it goes how emotions can be taken care of and how this fragility especially during this time of our emotions can be taken care of Start with yourself. This is what I, I think is um, the ongoing problem with how we think of knowledge. You have everything. You should dig in and go from in to out. Mm -hmm. So start with yourself. You know more than you think you do. The word empathy came from these works. People started to speak to me saying that they felt that they went into the world with empathy. So the word started to come up and I decided to acknowledge it and to um, take all of this curiosity that I have about sharing with people um, or building practices that could create a safe space to explore emotion and to explore ourselves, our bodies, our confusions, our desires, um, but through the dance form. When you see Crump, there is this kind of thing where you want to be able to do what you're seeing, not because the movement is interesting, but because there's such a level of intensity and of freedom, and it's so very particular in the way that it's, it, it develops. 
that you want to taste the same thing as the person that stands. You need to find, you have to find that, that energy um, cycling through your body from the ground into the chest, into the arm swing, and then recycle again over and over again. And that needs to happen within your own body and you have to keep working, I think, to find it for yourself and there's no faking it. Fascinating moments that exist in movement that is in this twilight zone between stillness and movement. What is that space between stillness and movement? How do we know when the movement starts? That they were just answering to a need that they felt inside and this need were, came from you know needing to move, needing to express, needing to dance, needing to be allowed to be intense and finding creative outlets to do so. I start to realize that I have a lot of experience um, no matter in, 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 in theater or arts or in commercials and then but I would like to use that to create impact and then this leads me to my new questions. So then I think how we can use theater or installation art as an intervention for improving mental health. Um, can artists and scientists orbit around the subject of mental health and to create collaborative research? And this is what made me curious to explore with scientists about mindfulness. Dive in, in, in motion because I never think about so much about uh, emotion before. And I just noticed that emotion is actually all around yeah and i think it's also a good chance to practice my creation approach museum of human emotions can mean um and can we have museum of human emotions is that even possible and then you know i was thinking about it how well actually we do archive or store emotions um, um, and even though we might not, um, you know, go through this particular emotion in this particular time because it's not this kind of situation, but we kind of know how it feels because we've we've experienced it before uh, in a different situation. So it's kind of yeah, having an archive of emotions, and then when you work with actors or dancers. Um, you wanna, you wanna, as Mark said, catch those moments, even though they're not like happening at this particular part, the moment. But you wanna, you know, you wanna bring them back. You wanna kind of connect to what they've gone through, what is familiar to them. Uh, for me, it's an opportunity for the artists to uh, find a way to connect with an audience in new ways, and for the audience to dive deep with them themselves. And by doing that. To dive into others. That project uh, inspires me to work on like an empathy machine, so called. But um, it's rather difficult if someone doesn't have like empathy. Really, if you don't have empathy, you may not feel the the, the way how people feels. But uh, for VR, it's more like uh, creating an immersive virtual world so that you are totally immersed in the environment. So I guess this is like the empathy building. And um, it's, yeah, the machine part is because it's, it's like a headset, it's like an electronic device. That's why uh, it's a machine. But for the empathy part, um, it's trying to put yourself into other shoes so that you can understand more. The virtual space, it's a tool, it's an artistic tool, or more that artists can make a tool out of anything. It's not like using the screen, like a drop like this. Yeah, this kind of idea, I really like impress. How can we to define the space? Or oh, the, the space has some function that we can, uh, we can follow or we can, we can have some, some, some interest, interesting element in the, in the space. And if we can immediately change the space, then maybe it will be a very interesting thing. And another way is uh, the movement. Like Ian Chen, he moved just around in the Wei Wing. And maybe his route or his movement can also generate or produce the space. All over this wall, 
and I'll build a set, a circle red carpet area over here, maybe. And there's a um, green screen, um, green screen TV studio, maybe around here. I get many inspiration, like, and uh, also you know that this project is the digital residency. So the everything I share is going to be the digitalized. So like the old performance I want to share must be digitalized. So that things is the the biggest things for me what I gained here. Firstly, the concept of digitization is actually very, very wide and includes a lot of meanings in it. The digitization of graves is actually progressing a lot outside of Japan in other places. So what is digitization? It is simply the digitization of personal information, um, not in a stone, a gravestone or a house-like um, structure, but for example, using a memorial, memorial object, whether it be a statue or an artistic piece, putting data in these objects and maintaining an, etern an, internal, an eternal being. This is also digitization. Uh, how do we uh, remember our, our, our friends? Because I was just searching on Facebook because Facebook would, would, uh, would have memories that pop up. And even friends that have passed away, uh, that uh, you will see from time to time their birthday reminder, uh, the photos that you took with them. Whether I want to showcase my emotion or whether I want to trigger an emotion in others. If we go to her um, page, she's playing this cute, kawaii, uh, pinky persona where she generated thousands, billions of business and she knew it quite well, like whatever she put out, it's going to be some influence directly into transaction. So where does this lead us to? After when you are a filmmaker, you have always in your brain some ideas that run, 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 you know, like you when you dance or when you paint. Or, and uh, But it was not a choice uh, at the um, at the beginning, it was not so. It was not so. It's really an, an adventure and, a, and a, really a human meeting, you know. Discovery was the richness of this dialogue across cultures and uh, how much we didn't know of each other, even if with some of the organizations that are part of this journey, we have been collaborating for some time. As it developed, I see connection among the artists which uh, is, I, I'm, I'm so happy and touched to see uh, because after this long period of time, it spread over a, a couple of months, uh, that people have built connection uh, among each other, which is uh, a very beautiful thing for me to see. And I am also very happy to see how uh, open-minded and generous all the artists are. In front of the screen, I, I feel very something like excited, nervous. So I really, I can feel the life, liveness. So that was uh, my um, strong experience here. They impulled me in different direction. And it's like um, we together to build up a spider net. The moments of joy uh, so these moments, they were like either um, one of the artists uh, chooses to play Moon River because it's time to close the, uh, the day of researching together and so they pick a song and that song is Moon River and we all move across our <laughs> small screens. Uh, it can be uh, a cat passing by uh, in front of the camera while we are digging into very serious researching and that brings a smile and a sort of, sort of belief and more space for thought. Uh, my strongest memory is um, the portraits of the artists, the smiles and also, also the frames, uh, the uh, strongest memories. And also another moment is that um, during the Hong Kong residency when Sarah um, 
um, when Sarah is um, disappeared from the screen, and then she reappeared again, and this uh, with the sense of touch because uh, she touched me, and then we danced together. It was the first week when we met. It was very like dynamic, and we dive into questions that are very personal and intimate. But the small tiny details, like the the tiny chats before we started early in the morning. Um, Yang Chang's birthday was very, very, it felt very human. All those human moments that felt like a community. It was like the demonstration that yes, we can have human encounters and very beautiful ones, even if we are not there in, in person. And my first digital birthday. And also everyone's smile. This journey was amazing because uh, Monica Gillette was with us <laughs> and facilitated this, um, this experience, these dialogues, these conversations and these exchanges.